Dean Richards and I'm going to talk about Elizabeth Bovia. The objective is to determine the, the difference between legal and ethical obligation, to discuss if medical institutions should have legal right to seek justification against the will of a competent patient, and also to identify the role nurses play when patients are having legal conflict within the institution that they are practicing, <clears throat> that they provide care. Elizabeth Bovia is a 20-year-old competent patient who is educated. She has a bachelor degree in social study. She's suffering from cerebral palsy and osteoarthritis, uh, degenerative arthritis. As a result, she's quadriplegic. She need, she's total dependent. She's unable to eat due to not able to swallow. She's in constant pain. She have a morphine pump that helped to alleviate some of her pain. <coughs> Elizabeth was pregnant and she had a miscarriage. Her husband abandoned her. Her father also abandoned her, stating that he will not he was not able to take care of her any longer. As a result, Elizabeth checked into the hospital and announced that she wanted to commit suicide by means of starvation. She had written consent stating that she wanted to be left alone and to die with it, her dignity. The hospital and the doctors decided that they would not allow her to die in their care. So as a result, they inserted a nasogastric tube against her will and force fed her. Elizabeth seek legal help. She take her case to the California Sup Superior Court who sided with the hospital and the doctors. She appealed the case with the appeal court agree with her. They stated that um, they, the patient have the right, that she have the right as an adult who is competent in exercising control over her own body. They also acknowledge that a competent patient have the basic and fundamental right to refuse medical treatment, even if that treatment would prolong or save their life. Cerebral palsy is a group of disorder that affects the movement and, and posture, and balance and posture. It is caused by damage to the developing brain. Um, people with chronic cerebral palsy need um, assistive device to, to um, walk or some of them cannot walk at all as in this Mobius case. Degenerative arthritis, also known as osteoarthritis, is incurable. It affects the joint, the joining, the joint lining, the ligament, and the underlying bone. As it affects and degenerates the tissue, the joint becomes stiff and painful. In order to alleviate the symptom, they, they focus on the symptom and improve the function of the patient. The ethical principles in this case is autonomy, non-maleficence, um, paternalism, and utility, utility. In autonomy, the patient have the right to freedom of choice. Elizabeth Wright was taken away from her as a result of the doctor's decision. Non-maleficence said, if you cannot do good, then you should do harm. The doc she should do no harm. Even though the doctor thought they were doing good for the patient, they were doing harm by stripping her of her dignity and violating her basic human rights. Paternalism says that one assumes the authority and make decisions for the other. The doctors assume that they know more about Miss Bovia than she did about herself. They also stated that if she is been if she has been fed she would live another 15 to 20 years. Although they were thinking about the quantity of life, Miss Bovia's focus was on her quality of life. Utility says what is best for the common good outweigh what is best for the individual. The state, the hospital, and the doctors decided that their right was more important than the patient. And as a result, the patient's dignity and her 
human rights was taken away. Natural Death Act passed in 1976 stated that if, if a patient is terminal or death is imminent, then treatment could stop. Ms. Bovia was not in any in this situation. As a result, there were conflicts. The hospital have conflicts stating that they fear that other patient would want to do the same thing that Ms. Bovia did. The doctor fear criminal liability for aiding and abetting a suicide. And also, there was conflict regarding the, the defending on the preserve, preservation of life and the protection of medical ethics. While Ms. Bovia was forced to live with the disease, and although our quantity of life may have prolonged, our quality of life was greatly diminished. The hospital may have to honor past requests. They might have to take patient off life support, and they may have to do the same for other patients. That was their dilemma. The doctors have sworn oath that they must practice by. Elizabeth Cage clearly violates some of these oaths. They were forced to choose between coming aiding a suicide or and preserving a life. They were they also have moral and ethical obligation and institutional um, rules and regulation to follow. Mrs. Um, Bovia's dilemma was that she was suffering. She was helpless and hopeless, and was alone. She was unable to commit suicide as she attempted in the past and was unsuccessful. She wanted to die but was not allowed to do so. She was physically unable to move and as a result of the nasogastric tube insertion, her, her right and her body was violated. The nursing implication in, the case, in this case that nurse have their primary commitment to the patient they are accountable for the care they provide. They're responsible to protect the patient's right, dignity, and safety. The American Nursing Association have specific guidelines that nurses must cooperate in their practice in order to stay within the legal boundary of their profession. One of the, these are some of the, the guidelines. One of the guidelines stated that nurses are frequently put in situation to conflict of conflict arising from the patient, the family, the doctor, the institution, and also the health insurance, the insurance. And as a result, they must these conflict must be resolved in a way to ensure the safety of the patient, guard the patient best interest and preserve the pro professional integrity of the nurse at the same time. Elizabeth Case did not talk about the nurses but it surely implicate that nursing, nurses was involved because it took place in a hospital. While the nasogastric tube may have been inserted by the doctor, the nurses could have been in, implicated. Some of the ethical issues the nurses could have faced in this is moral distress, which meaning that they know the right thing to do, but the organizational constraint make it difficult for them to take action. Or they also could have for, faced moral outrage, which meaning that they witnessed this immoral act but were not able to do anything to stop it. These are some of the ethical issues that they could have faced and they must stick to their core value and the value of the profession in order to meet organizational expectation at the same time, preserve the right and dignity of the patient. This has been my presentation. And I hope that we'll be able to discuss this further. Thank you.